Hello my dear friends, I am Cory and this is part 4 of the best miniature war games for beginners. Since a lot of you enjoyed the series, I thought I might as well do a part 4. So here I am with 4 more tabletop miniature war games that are best for beginners or for those who just want to try something different. So what I'm going to show you here four war games, specifically skirmish war game, because in my opinion those are the easiest one to learn and also the more affordable to play with. Of course this is not going to be a in-depth review of the four war games that I'm going to show you here, because otherwise this video will take me four hours and that's not ideal, so I will just give you those key elements that in my opinion makes these games really fun and cool and why you should absolutely try them. Also, this video has not been sponsored by the creators. This is just me telling you genuinely why I love these games. No money involved. But if you want to buy this game because you think that are interesting, well, I will leave down in the description the link to buy them. So go check it out if you want. All right, let's just start. And for the first two games, we need to go into Ravaged Wasteland Blasted by Nuclear Weapons. The first game that I want to show you is published and created by Ramshackle Game, and it's called Minigang. The only way that I can define minigangs is the basic war games. This is a tabletop skirmish game for two player and it is extremely easy. It's focused specifically on the basic of playing a miniature war game. By playing this game, which I did a couple of weeks ago with my friends, you can see that the creator wanted to do something that it's targeting people who have never played a war game in their entire life or who didn't even know that a concept of playing with tiny toy soldier even existed. Rules are extremely easy. Basically, two players have a squad of four models and each model have a specific role. A leader, a shooter, a fighter and a healer. You will use six-sided dice, and the rolls are pre-calculated, which means that you don't have to see what kind of weapon you're using with one of your model and what kind of armor the model you're shooting at have. Basically, you roll a dice, you see the results that are on the back of the books, and you see if you manage to hit and wound the target. Same thing for all the other models. And since every model has rolled, you have to keep in mind what they're good at. For example, a shooter is very good when using firearms, a fighter is very good when using melee weapons, a healer must heal, and the leader is a jack of all trades. He can shoot, but not as good as the shooter, and it can fight, but not as good as the fighter, and he can't heal. Only the healer can heal. So as you see, this is a pretty basic game that will teach everybody who have never played a war game in their life the basic concept of what it means to play a war game. So rolling dice, understanding the, the role of every model or unit, and also strategy, taking your model into covers and thinking about what you're going to do in your next move. Another thing that I really like about this game is that it has three different difficulty levels. The gateway level, which is the one that I have just talked about it, the casual level, which introduce a deck of cards, which are basically the stratagems for Warhammer 40k. These cards are weapons, tools, armors, things that you can equip your models with, just to spice up a little bit the game. And then we have the Arcore, which is a campaign mode. So you see, it's a pretty complete game for the very beginners. It might be a little bit boring if you already have played a lot of different type of war games, uh, but for the very beginners, maybe you have a family member or a friend that wants to get into this hobby, but you think that maybe Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigmar are a little bit too complicated, try with minigangs. I will assure you that they will have a lot of fun and they will understand very well what it means to play a war games with miniatures. But Minigangs isn't the only war game that Ramshackle Games have created. Let me present you Nuclear Renaissance. Nuclear Renaissance is basically Minigangs, but expanded into a more standard, if we can define it that way, 
tabletop skirmish war game. It used the same system of mini ganks, but instead of six sided dice, you will use 10 sided dice, which in my opinion are better because it opens to more possibilities and results, just because you add four more faces to that dice. And the rolls are, again, pre calculated. The difference with mini gang is the complete and total freedom in creating your warband. This game doesn't have factions like Necromunda or uh, Kill Team or Warcry, but instead you can define any models by five different classes, which are Hero, Soldier, Goon, Driver and Specialist. This way you can literally create whatever you want. Do you want to create a warband in which the hero is a super intelligent AI robot that had managed to enslave a bunch of mutated beasts? You can do that. Do you want to create a warband composed of gentlemen and noble women that has decided to band together in order to save the poor people from mutated beasts? You can do that. It gives you complete freedom of creation, which is something that I really like about a war game. But between those five classes, I've mentioned a driver, because this is the other very interesting part of Nuclear Renaissance. You can have vehicles in this game, which is something that we don't see very often in skirmish war games. I think that I have seen this only in Necromanda just recently with Ash Wasted, I think that's the name, supplement for Necromanda, but in any other cases I haven't seen any other skirmish war game that has vehicles in it. Which I can understand why technically a skirmish war game you're not going to use a lot of models, you're going to use like five, six, seven, a dozen of model if it is a very big skirmish war game. But by introducing vehicle, if you do that in a good way, it will be very fun and incredibly interesting. And Nuclear Renaissance does specifically that. You also have a lot of different vehicles, motorbikes, cars, trucks, tank, and weapons and war gears and armor for all of these vehicles. I love this. So if you have played Minigang, I really suggest you then go try it out Nuclear Renaissance. It also have an expansion which is the Tome of Tildiris, Tridilis, Tildiris, Tridlins, 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 Tridlins. This book right here, which expands even more the game with more weapons and vehicles and stuff. Go check it out. It's, this is also sold in the Ramshackle Games website. Let me know what you think about it in the comment because I really think that you are going to love this one. All right, for the third game, we have to step away from post-apocalyptic nuclear wastelands and instead go in one of my favorite settings for a tabletop war game, which is fantasy. Specifically, Noble Knights Questing for Honor and Glory. Have you ever heard about the game Full Tilt? Full Tilt was a game created by Games Workshop and was published in issue 215 of White Dwarf back when White Dwarf was actually an interesting magazine. And the game was really simple. It gives you all the tools to create a jousting game between Bretonians, which is something that is really interesting. And it is a shame that this game hasn't been expanded more by Games Workshop back at the time. So what do you do? Do you go on eBay and look out for issue 215 of White Dwarf in order to play Full Tilt? or do you buy the game that I'm going to show you here, which is a modernized and expanded version of that game? My dear noble knights and beautiful damsels, let me present you Steel and Steed. What is this beautiful, beautiful rulebook? Basically, this rulebook will allow you to recreate a knightly tournament as a tabletop war game. And I'm not only talking about jousting. This rulebook will give you rules for any kind of game in a nightly tournament. We are talking about one-on-one -on -one combat, jousting, mountain combat, team combat on foot, team combat on horseback, and archery 
And on top of that, the game also gives you the tool to create your own knights with abilities, classes, armor, weapons, ability for your steed. Oh my god, this game is so goddamn cool! So yeah, I really think that this game is incredibly amazing and cool and I really suggest you try it out. And this is an absolutely unbiased opinion and the fact that I love Knight doesn't mean anything at all. Now, excuse me, but I have to go on eBay and buy every single Bretonians that I find on the website, so see you later. All right. Uh, jokes aside, let's talk about the last game. Have you ever heard of the author H.G. Welsh, The Invisible Man H.G. Welsh, The War of the Worlds H.G. Welsh, that H.G. Welsh. Do you also know that H.G. Welsh might be the father of tabletop wargaming as we know it? Because he also wrote a little book, which is also a rule book, called Little Wars. Now, what is Little Wars? It is a tabletop war game, but also a little history lesson. Basically, H.G. Wells decided to create a tabletop war game with one of his friends by looking at the toys of their children, which were little toy soldiers with spraying cannons and stuff like that. And he thought that a game might be created using that very toy soldiers. And so, in this little book, he wrote about the thought process of creating a tabletop wargaming, this tabletop wargaming. And it is incredibly interesting see how he develops everything, the concept of fighting, the concept of movement, etc. There is also a uh, battle report inside and the rules. You can play little wars. Now, keep in mind, these rules are really basic because it is a primitive concept of a tabletop war game. Uh, this might also be the very first official tabletop war game with rules, I think. I don't know, I'm not an historian. Maybe you can let me know down in the comments if you know something about it. But yes, I think this is a incredible and interesting piece of history that we should absolutely try and play in order for us to understand what it means to play tabletop wargaming because we're going to experience it from the very beginning. I think that this is a very interesting game, not only for beginners, but also for veteran wargamers because it might be very interesting to experience the very first tabletop wargame, in my opinion. This is published by Eterna, but there are like quadribajillion editions and formats for this book. I bought mine from Amazon. Uh, I will leave the link in the description if I manage to find again the product on Amazon, but just type little wars on the Amazon search bar and you will find it. This is the illustrated uh, version, which I suggest you to look out for the illustrated one because there are photos inside which are very interesting to look at. Go check out Little Wars. Uh, it is a very interesting piece of history for our hobby. So my friends, let me know down in the comments what you think about these four war games. If you have already played them, if you already knew them, let me know everything you think about these four war games. And also, if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. This is the last episode of the series, just because these are all the games that I have managed to play and that also I think are interesting. If I manage to play more game in the future, I will make a part 5, part 6, who knows, it depends on the games that I found to be interesting and fun to play. But for the moment, this is the last episode. So again, my friends, thank you very much. I hope to see you the next time. Down in the description, if you want, there is the link for my Instagram and also a way to support me if you want. You don't have to do that, but I would really appreciate that. And that's it. This is the end of the video. I'm Corey, and I hope to see you the next time. Ciao, ciao. The